welcome to Anyone Can Learn to Code. Continuing our analysis of this dog class, I'm going to make a couple of changes that don't actually improve the class, but they are just simply the standard way of doing things in Ruby. This is known as idiomatic Ruby, meaning this is the way people actually write Ruby code, although technically they don't have to. They can write the code the way we've just done it here. However, it's good to get used to the conventions that Rubyists use. So I'm going to start introducing you to some of those here. The first thing is that instead of calling this instance variable dog's name, and similarly dog's breed and dog's age, it would be much more conventional to simply call it name and breed and age. Note that at first glance, this seems a little bit tricky because we have a method called name whose sole purpose is to return an instance variable called at name. What I'd like to point out is that this name and this name are two entirely different things. This name is the name of our instance method. This is at name, which is an instance variable. Now, what would actually happen if we forgot to put the at sign on line 8? Can you guess what will happen? Let's actually try this out. Let's load up IRB. We can actually see that we get an error that says stack level too deep. Stack level too deep generally indicates that we have triggered something known as an infinite loop. That is, a loop that never ends. How is that happening? That's happening because on line 33, we call dog.name. Now that means that we call the instance method called name on line 7. What does this instance method do? Well, it does whatever it says on line 8, which is return a name. Name just happens to be the name of the method that we're currently in. So that causes us to call the name method, which returns name, which calls the name method, which returns name, which causes us simply to get stuck. So it's really, really important to name your variables properly, and all instance variables will begin with an at sign. Again, the at sign is part of the variable name, and it is something entirely different than name without an at sign. Okay, the next piece of idiomatic Ruby that we're going to do is that instead of calling the setName method setName, we're going to call it something totally different. We're going to call it name equals. And this is a special thing in Ruby that you can actually use an equal sign at the end of a method name as part of the method name. So the name of this method is called name equals. And instead of calling the set breed method set breed, we will call it the breed equals method. And similarly, instead of set age, we will call it the age equals method. To start, we're going to use them the classic way. So instead of saying dog.setName, we're going to say dog.name equals Fifi, and dog.breed equals poodle, and dog.age equals one. And let's make sure this still works. Indeed, it still works. Now, the really cool thing about Ruby is that it has a special rule for methods that end with an equal sign. And that is that when you use those methods, as we are doing on lines 30 through 32, we actually are allowed to put spaces in between, like so. So we have a space between name and equals and another space between equals and our argument. And in fact, we're even allowed to eliminate the parentheses from the argument. And let's test this out. It still works. What's really cool about this is that at first glance it actually looks like we are setting variables. But the truth is we are not. When we say dog.name equals Fifi, we are actually calling the name equals method. That is, it's as if we said this. However, the Ruby language is designed to make code very easy to read. And therefore, they allow for this special dispensation that when having a name that ends with the equal sign, you do not have to call it as you do all other methods. You have the right to call it like this. And this is idiomatic Ruby.